Happy Earth Day! Welcome back to Curiosity Hub, I'm Ollie Hubbard. Today is Earth Day, and as a citizen of this pale blue dot, it's time to think about the place we call home. This year the campaign is focused on environmental and climate literacy. That is a lot of knowledge to be literate on but I encourage you to just investigate little bits at a time as I do the same and follow your curiosity to a more informed perception of our planet's beautiful environments and climates. To start you off, I thought I'd answer a question one of my friends asked last week. What is happening to the Great Barrier Reef and will it survive for our children to see it as we do today? Firstly, what is happening to the Great Barrier Reef? Well, from 1985 to 2012, the reef's average coral cover fell by 40%, as reported by the Australian Institute of Marine Science. 2016 then dealt a heavy blow with the worst ever coral bleaching event. This map only shows the reefs in 2016, which were the most severely bleached in red, and the reefs which avoided bleaching in green. So there are many reefs along the coast between those two extremes. The director for the ARC Centre of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies at James Cook University, Professor Terry Hughes, gives meaning to those red dots. He explained that we lost 67% on average of the corals in the northern 700 kilometres of the Barrier Reef between March and October of 2016. This puts the corals at serious risk but some can recover from being bleached. The real danger hit when recent data has now shown further severe bleaching since the beginning of 2017. Back-to-back long-term bleaching events reduces the chance of the coral surviving, and with temperatures only projected to keep rising, the future does not look bright. Poor water quality, coastal development, fishing and the crown of thorns starfish all contribute to the reef's destruction, but climate change is the greatest contributor to coral bleaching. But what is coral bleaching? Most corals survive in a symbiotic or win-win relationship with a photosynthetic algae called Zooxanthellaea. However, the algae has a narrow temperature range of approximately 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. So with oceans warming, the zooxantha layer is becoming heat stressed and leaving the coral. We see this as the white skeleton of the coral is revealed. As well as absorbing the added heat, the oceans are also absorbing a lot of the increasing carbon dioxide. And with more dissolved carbon dioxide in the ocean, there are less free carbonate ions available for making calcium carbonate, which provides the foundation of coral growth. So increasing carbon dioxide increases ocean acidity and stresses the coral further. Climate change may then deliver the final blow with more extreme weather events. Cyclones can destroy reefs, especially if they are already weakened by bleaching. But even extreme rainfall could send large amounts of fresh water and sediment into a reef, causing serious damage. It's hard to explain the extent of these impacts without going into the immensely complex systems that are intertwined with the reef. But the zooxanthellaea and coral is the foundation to the Great Barrier Reef. If they start to die, then 10% of the world's fish species who live in the reef are at risk. Six of the world's seven species of marine turtles will be at risk, as well as the birds, sharks, rays, whales, dolphins, and species which we haven't even seen yet. Why can one species destroy so many others? David Attenborough says, it is one of the greatest and most splendid natural treasures that the world possesses. But as well as its natural value, the reef's beauty draws two million visitors every year, contributing six billion dollars to the Australian economy every year and provides employment to 69,000 Australians every year. The reef is valuable. So, 
Will the reef survive for our children to see it as we do today? You're probably expecting me to say yes, if we act now. But there is a temperature and carbon dioxide increase that we've already set in motion. So our children will most likely never see the reef as we do today. That's sad. As a group, we've robbed the future and the earth of immense beauty, especially when all this time the earth has only ever given all she has to us. But there is a hope if we can prevent any further contribution to climate change that the reef will remain and if our climate stabilizes it may even bounce back so if we act now our children's children may see the reef as we do today and with increasing technology and research it may even be better so i encourage you to just go now and explore the beauty of the reef. This link will take you to the XL Catlin Sea View Survey, where a lot of this footage is from, and where you can explore the reef as if you're diving through it. Then, if you feel it's important, consider the reef when looking at new mining proposals. Consider the reef when looking at climate change. And consider the reef, consider the earth, when looking at your life, because I know I certainly can do a lot more. We are the caretakers of this earth, and this earth is beautiful. This earth is our home. Happy Earth Day. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Curiosity Hub. If you want to be part of next week's episode, I'd love to hear from you down below with any questions or comments. Subscribe to join our curious community, and I'll see you soon. Hug a tree, have a happy Earth Day, and stay curious.